is Clota Parker, and I'm chair of the City of Northampton's Cable Advisory Board. This is a public hearing on Comcast of Massachusetts as part of the city's cable television license renewal proceedings. With me tonight are fellow cable board members, um, Emma Khan Sudan, Robin Coolbath, and Jim McKeever, who will be here in one <laughs> moment. Sorry for starting without him. And to my right, I have Bill August, who is the city's legal counsel specializing in cable television. Comcast's cable television license in Northampton is due to expire in April of 2016. The federal law which governs cable television requires the city to engage in license renewal proceedings, including the holding of public ascertainment hearings. Ultimately, these proceedings will result in either a renewal of Comcast's license or a denial of such renewal. Under federal and state law, the initial decision as to whether to renew or deny Comcast license resides in the franchising authority, which is Mayor Mayor David Narkowitz. The cable <laughs> board has been delegated the task of gathering information for and transmitting information to Mayor Narkowitz. And the final licensing decisions must be made by the mayor acting as the license issuing authority pursuant to Massachusetts cable licensing law. At this hearing, we will receive comments and testimony from the general public concerning what cable-related needs and interests are important to the public. The focus of the ascertainment is on identifying the city's and the community's, community's cable needs. In addition, the public may comment on how well Comcast has performed under its existing license. Any public comments and tes testimony will supplement the ascertainment records developed by the city. And we ask, if possible, for you to address your testimony to these issues of the community's needs, interests, and Comcast's past and current performance. Members of the cable board may also have questions or comments. And we ask that you keep your comments brief and to the point and conclude them in no longer than three minutes. And we have two timekeepers here who will be monitoring that. And that's to honor everybody's time here. People have taken time out to be here. Before receiving testimony from the public, Comcast will have an opportunity to discuss its cable operations in Northampton, including past performance and particularly the important aspects of the proposed license renewal that is being considered. <clears throat> Any questions to Comcast should be directed through me as chairperson, and I will rule whether they're in order. Before testifying, please state your name and address for the record. And should you wish to supplement your oral testimony and to provide any written comments on matters or concerns or comments concerning the renewal process, you can forward them to the cable board, care of the city hall. Un until further notice, we will be keeping the record of this hearing open to the public to receive such comments. We also know for the record the process of ascertainment of community cable needs and interests will remain open until further notice. So thank you all for coming out tonight. Welcome to this public hearing and to further ascertain and address the important subject of cable related needs and interests of the city of Northampton. And this hearing is part of an ongoing public process. We invite public participation. And just to start off the evening, I'm going to open the floor to Comcast, um, trying to see where Aaron is, and give Aaron, um, Aaron Young, who's um, representing Comcast here, an opportunity to speak to the, the performance. Saunders. Aaron, excuse me, Aaron Saunders. It, it may as well be Aaron Young while I'm here. Uh, <laughs> but uh, thank you, Madam Chair, Mayor, uh, for holding this hearing. Uh, Comcast has had uh, a tremendous relationship with the city of Northampton, uh, providing cable services uh, here, along with supporting uh, NCTV through its PEG Access channels and uh, uh, now what is uh, annually uh, over $400,000 in PEG Access support. Uh, I look forward on behalf of the company to listening tonight to the cable related needs of Comcast subscribers here in the city and to the process in general of uh, license renewal uh, for 2016. I'll keep it brief because I know we have a lot of folks here to speak. Thank you.
Thank you, Aaron. Um, and unless anybody has any questions about Aaron's statement, um, I think we are ready to open the floor um, to the hearing. And I'd like to invite um, Mayor Narkowitz to open the, the comments. Um, we had a sign-in sheet. I have the first page here. And I'm going to call people after, after the mayor has spoken um, to come up. So you can get yourself lined up um, if you know that you were in the beginning, a few people. Go Thank ahead. you. Thank you very much. I'm pleased to join with everyone this evening to gather um, important public input for achieving a new contract with Comcast that will provide Northampton residents with our continued excellent programming, um, the best access to information technology, and an expansion of our local programming efforts which support our city school system and municipal outreach and offer many cultural and educational programs for viewers. I want to thank Cloda Parker and the members of my Cable Advisory Board for their dedicated efforts in advising me on this important Northampton issue. I also want to thank Al Williams of NCTV for his continued leadership of NCTV, which is an incredible city asset. NCT offers, not only offers program that supports the mission of an educated and informed citizenry in cultural, educational, and civic matters, but NCTV also works to keep, inf keep us informed and experienced in using the ever-changing technologies in the video and virtual worlds of communications. This new contract negotiation marks our long-standing working relationship with Com Comcast. We look forward to continued efforts building on our current programming to achieve improvements and expansions in service and technology. We look forward to our continued work with Aaron Saunders of Comcast. Northampton, as we all know, is a very unique and vibrant city with a dynamic population that is deeply committed to the highest levels of civic engagement, public education, open and participatory municipal government, and the best in arts and cultural programming. Some of the cable contract goals and needs that I want to set, a vibrant, state-of-the-art cable and fiber network is a most critical foundation for all of us to have a community that is fully informed and participatory on all issues from education to municipal affairs. Additionally, the day-to-day -day operations of our city and school system relies on the use of these technologies. We look forward to working with Comcast on our contract, which will address our needs for improving and expanding our local programming, improving the resources of NCTV to deliver this programming, working on the technology infrastructure systems that help our city and school system do their good work, and keeping our costs for this affordable for all citizens. I thank all of you for attending this evening. It's important to know the priorities and concerns of our citizens for use in our ongoing conversations with, contract, uh, with Comcast on service improvements. We look forward to collecting these ideas for consideration and advocacy with Comcast, and I thank you all again for attending tonight's hearing. Thank you. Thank you, Mayor Narkowitz. And um, you can start coming up to the podium. We have uh, Steve Eldridge, and remember to just state your name and your address for the record when you come up. And uh, just to uh, <coughs> want to line up with Vanessa, Marianne Labarge, and Mary Alice are the next few people, just if you want to get prepared. Okay, Madam Chairman, and uh, thank you, uh, Mayor. I am Stephen Eldridge. I live at 20 Nonotech Street in Florence. I am the theater teacher at Northampton High School. I also teach the Film Studies course, which is a course that is primarily focused on watching, discussing, and learning from the great films. Um, in addition, I uh, direct and uh, manage the, uh, the student productions and the school productions in the after school program. So I'm in a position where I'm actually devoted to something that is essentially visual storytelling uh, that we both handle as an academic subject and as an after school extracurricular subject and make connections between those two things. I'd like to address the relationship uh, that we have at NHS between ourselves and NCTV and some of the possibilities that are really coming together as we've been through the first few years of having NCTV in the building. Um, I, uh, the film studies course is again most about watching, discussing, and learning from the great films. Over the past four years, I've been trying to develop a course that is more intensive uh, and involves more about making film, teaching students to make films, great films, inspired by the great films, than about watching them. And NCTV has been a part of my planning all the way along. Um, 
I am beginning, I began teaching that course yesterday, the first day of the spring semester in 2014. The course is called Multimedia Production and it's going to be taught collaboratively by myself and the NCTV staff. We are very excited about this course. We've been meeting all year long. We've been meeting as often as we can to share ideas, exchange thoughts, and try to come up with really innovative ways that we can uh, teach really serious filmmaking techniques to high school students using the resources and the time frame that we have available uh, within the school. Now, how did this course come about? It came about because NCTV was in the building. And it came about because of who we hired. Al Williams and his excellent staff, who are all about you here in the room, uh, are as dedicated to teaching and more importantly to collaborating as I am. And I am, I am all about collaboration. One minute. Thank you. <laughs> um, and we have been collaborating steadily since they arrived. They've been helping me develop all of my ideas, many of my exercises that I use in the film studies course, which have become more and more oriented towards filmmaking, so that we finally got to a point where we could take this big step and actually start the multimedia production course, which is going to be tied into the NCTV Paradise City Press website. Student film will be posted on the NCTV Paradise City um, Press website. Uh, this is very exciting. It, uh, it is a chance for us to use curriculum. And now what we need to do is expand what we're offering into extracurricular work as well. I have been able to tie in theater academic classes into the, post to the student production program, which is extracurricular. We need what I would like to start something for is an after school media coordinator who can do the same kind of thing. Help the students, and we have some students here, especially Ben Bradley Gilbert, a brilliant young filmmaker who will be speaking to you tonight. He's been working as an intern at NT NCTV along with other students and has been creating some really great stuff. I believe that's my time. Yeah. <laughs> I want to thank you all very much. This has been a wonderful journey, and I'm very very excited to continue my collaboration with NCTV. Thank you all. Thank you. Um, the next, next one. I'm Vanessa Okendo, 7 Bernard Street. I'm here uh, speaking on behalf Sorry. of Vanessa Oquendo, O Q U N D O, 7 Bernard Street, Vanessa, Vanessa Oquendo, O Q U E N D O, 7 Bernard Street, or 212 Main Street for work. Uh, there are two aspects to the franchise renewal. Both NCTV and the city are be beneficiaries of cable proceeds. The, most of the funding goes to NCTV, a uh, smaller portion goes to the city. Uh, I, on a personal level, I'm here to support NCTV. Uh, as a person working for the city, I'm here to express, make some statement regarding the importance of funding for keeping the network, the fiber network for the city and the technology going on. During the last renewal cycle, Comcast and the city negotiated for the city to receive funding to build its own fiber network. This network connects about 25 buildings, all schools, all city buildings, libraries, and public safety including. The network is vital for the city's business to provide uh, services to the citizen and for efficient communication between the departments. Uh, so it's really important that the funding continue in order to maintain, uh, you know, things have to be kept up to date. Uh, during the renewal cycle, which is 2016, we have to look at replacing also some more technology, and so it falls really nicely. Uh, so I'm here advocating for that, that when you negotiate with the cable company, remember that there are two recipients of the funding, NCTV and the city. And I have a letter that I will make sure that it, arrive, that it sends to the city hall. Okay, thank you. Thank you. Good evening. Um, I'm City Councilor Mary Ann LaBarge from Ward 6. Um, I am procedure, just a procedural, procedural point. I'm yeah. going to actually collect the uh, copy of the letter from um, Vanessa so that we can enter it into the record. Thank you, Marianne. Thank you. Sorry about that. Good evening. I'm City Councilor Marianne Labarge from Ward 6. I want to thank the Chair of Comcast and NCTV for putting on this forum this evening. 
I think our mayor has said exactly what our expectations are for the city of Northampton. I'm here tonight because of concerns from many residents on my ward for the past three years and even in the city who have great concerns of moving your office out of Northampton. We should be together, working together, and I find it very, very difficult for people with disabilities, and I have several on my ward, who find because of you moving that office, either they have to go straight through Amherst almost to the Belchertown line to bring a box, to bring a box. If not, if they come to their home, they're charged with it. I have people who cannot afford to travel like that. So I'm really hoping that you look at this issue very, very carefully. I know money sometimes is a factor, but Northampton is vibrant, we work together, and I really think you need to look at that one issue very, very carefully of bringing that office back to Northampton so we all can work together as a community. Thank you. We just wanted uh, to know where exactly the offices were. Sorry, Erin, I keep losing you. <laughs> um, just for the record, where the Comcast offices are. So that was Amherst, Springfield, Westfield, and the last? Greenfield. Greenfield. Okay. Thank you. Amherst, Springfield. Greenfield, and Westfield. Westfield and yeah. Springfield, Greenfield, Westfield. Yeah, go ahead, go ahead. Hi, my name is Mary Alice Krim. I'm here to ask Comcast and the city of you Northampton. Your, your address as well for the record, please. Sure, my address is 34 Nash Hill Road in Williamsburg. Thank you. I'm here to ask Comcast and the city of Northampton to support Northampton Community Television to the fullest extent financially possible to provide NCTV programming in HD, and to interconnect the NCTV facility via fiber, and to provide detailed program listing for NCTV on Comcast X1 and X2 platforms, as well as any and all future on-screen program guides. Northampton Community Television provides essential services to our community, covering what's going on in our backyards, offering production, editing, and journalism trainings, and giving local media makers access to high quality equipment. I support and value NCTV in multiple ways, and I know that the things I'm asking Comcast to do will ensure that NCTV can continue the great work they have been doing here in the community and beyond. First, I'm a media activist and community member that cares about our media ecosystem in the Pioneer Valley, and I'm thankful to have an award-winning, local, independent, community-centered media organization contributing to the news and information available in the area. In our increasingly consolidated, corporate-driven media marketplace, NCTV is a rare beacon of what media institutions can do. Second, I'm a member of the NCTV Board of Directors, and I'm constantly amazed at what the organization and its staff are able to do with members of our community. I see the staff working nights and weekends side by side with all kinds of folks seeking their services. In fact, the community demand for NCTV services has exceeded its capacity as the documented drastic increase in the use of their services shows. And lastly, I work at Free Press, a national nonprofit organization fighting for all our rights to connect and communicate. Free Press has an office here in the Valley located in Florence and we work with community media institutions such as NCTV around the country to fight for better media and technology policies, promote the public interest, and strengthen democracy. NCTV is a great ally in our work and is very well respected in the national media movement. Moreover, at Free Press, we have seen similar contract negotiations go poorly in other places, cutting off people's access to the tools to make their stories heard and limiting the impact of vital community centers like NCTV. To close, I urge Comcast and the City of Northampton to support NCTV to the fullest extent financially possible. Similarly, I want to see NCTV programming in HD 
and in on-screen program guides. Lastly, I'd like Comcast to interconnect to the NCTV facility via fiber. I urge the City of Northampton and Comcast to do everything possible to meet these needs and the concerns of all the other people here tonight while you renegotiate the cable contract. Thank you. Thank you. Um, I'm just going to call the next few so you can get in line. We have Chuck Schmidt, Steve Harrell, Steve Sanderson, Kay Zatvitna, and Robin Barber. So if you want to line up. And we should have Chuck. Can I go first real quick now? Do you mind? I, I signed up. Yeah, yeah, go ahead. Is, is that, are you Josh? I'm, not, no. I'm Noah. My name is Noah no. for okay. uh, 100 Washington Avenue in Northampton. Um, first of all, I'd like to thank the committee, uh, the mayor, Comcast, uh, and everyone for, for all of the support. Uh, I second everything that everyone has said about uh, how important it is to keep Northampton uh, as up to date on in technology. Uh, as possible. Uh, but I'm here actually to speak specifically to my experience at NCTV. Uh, they have been an invaluable resource to me. Uh, Al, who's been an amazing general manager, I don't know where he is, but uh, and Dave and Jen and Ian, who are all here, uh, have been really, um, they really, as I said, they really have been invaluable with their, uh, their service and um, the, the questions that they're able to answer, it takes years and years of experience to learn. Uh, I can say that from experience. And uh, to explain it is even harder. So uh, I really commend them. Uh, I truly believe that NCTV and the money put into NCTV from Comcast is an investment uh, in the city. And I really could go on and on why that is an investment. But, um, you know, in journalism and for a number of different reasons. But as uh, someone mentioned, Ben, a local filmmaker here, you know, just thinking about him, the ability that NCTV gives him and the place that he'll be or could be in five years, I'm not kidding, five years, you know, he could be getting uh, up to multi, you know, a couple of million dollars to produce a film because he learned through NCTV at, in high school. And, and, you know, if I was Ben, I'd write about Northampton, where I know about, and I would bring that movie here, and that movie would create jobs, and it would bring money to Northampton and to the area. And as you well know, the tax credits in, in Massachusetts, you know, that only enhances producers uh, wanting to bring, bring uh, money into the state. Uh, I can speak uh, from uh, some experience because I actually just came from Louisiana, where I've seen firsthand that tax, those tax credits, along with um, infrastructure, bring in thousands of jobs, got me a job, uh, and millions, hundreds of millions, actually, of, of dollars. Um, so I'll, I'll just wrap up by saying, uh, you know, I, I truly do believe this is an investment, and um, you know, NCTV is is the gateway for that for people to learn media, anyone to learn media, uh, and I truly believe that in today's world with our technology, media has become democratized, and NCTV is that gateway to that democracy of media. Um, and, you know, there's a lot of, stuff, you know, city council stuff put on, but also the amount of journalism, you know, democratizing that journalism and letting people get out the, those stories, uh, I think is invaluable. Uh, so I would just like to thank uh, NCTV and Comcast for, the, for what they've already provided, but I, I know that there is more that can be provided. And with that more, uh, or, you know, with just, just with the, even a little bit more um, funding, we could really, we could really uh, create some amazing content. Thank you. Thank you. We are going to try to stay with this um, lineup. I have Chuck Schmidt was the next person on the, on the thing. So, and, and remember, just a reminder, so I have Chuck, Steve, Steve Sanderson, and Kay. And just a reminder to state your name and your address for the record. Thank you. Hello, my name is Chuck Schmidt. I live at 703 Ryan Road since 1976. Uh, I've been a Comcast customer when it was, as soon as it was available. Uh, I support NCTV 110%. I know many people over the years that have benefited from it. I would like to see their budget increase by the same ratio that our bill's been increasing. And I also would like to see their, uh, uh, move their office back to Northampton. I think saying that the office is in Amherst is a misnomer because it's almost out of Amherst, east of Amherst. So bring the office back here. Thanks. Thank you. Go ahead, uh, Steve. 
Hello, my name is Steve Harrell. I live, I've lived in Northampton uh, for 33 years. I live now at 474 Elm Street. <clears throat> and for most of that time, uh, just by way of identification, I have owned and operated an active food service business downtown. I've had an interest in movie making for a long time, and about four years ago, I signed up for the course at NCTV to become a producer. I thought the course was very well taught and thorough, and there was an exam at the end, and I was a little nervous about that, but I took it and I passed. Since then, I've produced a few shows that have been broadcast on NCTV. One of these, one of these was, uh, is uh, Bliss Street, Signs of Northampton. Bliss Street is a street in Northampton. I want to talk about this as an example only uh, of why NCTV is important. This 25-minute film has hundreds of actual signs in it from all over the city, streets, schools, parks, city government, businesses, traffic signs, galleries, restaurants, you name it. Some of these signs are straightforward, but others are very artistic and evoke certain feelings when you see them. This production sold no product, and I was free to include or not include any particular content. The movie is one of a kind, just about our own community, and may someday prove, I hope, to be an interesting historical and cultural reflection of Northampton. I'm not trying to toot my own horn, my own horn here, just to uh, give an example. Uh, so people have told me that they loved it, and in a small way, I hope it will help add to the cohesion and pride of community that we feel here in Northampton. Without the facilities and distribution provided by NCTV, this little film would not have been possible. This is something would not, which would not have been produced and broadcast by the likes of NBC. One minute? Okay. Uh, changing the subject then, uh, the other night, it was about 8.30 and I wanted to watch something on PBS at 9. What to do or watch for those 30 minutes? I did what most other people do, surf the on-screen program guide. There I could see easily what the choices were, except not for NCTV. I'm sure I've missed some good shows on NCT for, NCTV for this reason. Even if you bring it up, what could you possibly be seeing? It looks interesting, but what show is this? Who are these people? And how long will it be on? There's no way of telling. This situation really needs to be equalized uh, with the rest of the programming on Comcast. Thank you very much. Thank you. Uh, hello, my name is Steve Sanderson, 286 Spring Street, Florence. I'm here as a local artist and as a representative of the Northampton Arts Council to speak on behalf of NCTV, Al Williams and his staff. Um, the benefits, benefits that they provide for this community are immeasurable, but I'll start off with the Arts Council relies on them greatly and the service they provide for us is they cover our events and the Arts Council gives, nurtures the artistic community here in Northampton by giving out grants twice a year. And we raise the money through events like Four Sundays in February and Trans Performance. And NCTV covers these events for us and they do a great job, uh, a professional job and creates awareness in the community, brings people in, brings people into work to help, to volunteer. It also gives local artists uh, a very professional, high caliber uh, tool to market themselves, to help, to help promote themselves. They, uh, they, give, they give time to us over and over again. Uh, the, the bands that play for trans performance don't get paid. They support the Arts Council by playing for free and helping Phil Look Park every every summer. Uh, they leave with a great uh, visual of themselves that they can use to help promote themselves. Um, and like, again, just four Sundays in February covering covering what we do over and over again. I just, I don't know how, we never, could never afford to, you know, if we didn't have this resource, we could never afford the uh, caliber of, of 
what AL and NCTV provide. So I just want to encourage whoever I can to please renew their contract and, and support uh, their budget. Thank you. Good evening. I'm Dr. K. Salk Whitney. I'm here as a parent of a high school student, and I want to talk about the particular resources that NCTV offers to high school students. When my daughter was a freshman um, and had been through a very rough first year at the high school, <clears throat> adjusting her learning style to the demands of the high school, that summer, um, I put a call into Al Williams saying that my daughter was interested in NCTB and was there any way she could have a role there. He instantly welcomed her, welcomed me, set up a 10 to 15 hour internship for her throughout the summer. Um, I'm up here speaking, she's more comfortable behind the camera than in front of it. <laughs> but it was a remarkable um, opportunity. She worked with Gary and Jeremy and Al that summer. She then became part of the team that helped film the school board meetings and the city council meetings and was met where she was. With the, the learning was, or, was um, what? orchestrated to meet her needs and her particular learning style. And it was a remarkable opportunity. And it took, all it took was a high school student saying, I'm interested, for Al to say, absolutely, come down, let's make, we'll make it work. Now as a senior, she is a member of that new class, the Multimedia Productions class, and is looking forward to working both with Steve uh, um, Etheridge and Eldridge, sorry, Steve Eldridge and with the NCTV staff. I think that the resources that NCTV brings to the high school are unique and remarkable, and they offer things that the high school cannot possibly afford on their own. It is mutually beneficial both to NCTV and to the high school students. But as a parent, I think it offers a unique opportunity for the students. And I'm very grateful for all that they do. And I urge uh, the city and Comcast to support NCTV to the fullest, fullest extent possible. Thank you. And I forgot my address, 9 Bayberry Lane in Florence. <laughs> Thank you. And just before Robin, you uh, come up, I'm just going to call the next, next few so that you can get ready. It's Pam Hunter, Jen Ramsey. Henry White and Christy Svein, and Matthew, sorry, her, her, you, you'll know who you are. <laughs> I, I, won't, I won't pronounce this correctly. Go ahead. I'm Robin Barber. <clears throat> I'm the uh, chair of NCTV's board and uh, a former video production and photography teacher at Northampton High School. Um, We've been hearing about the quality of programming that NCTV's excellent staff uh, and producers create, but an issue has been emerging about the quality of the, of the signal. And uh, the analogy came to my mind that it's, it's like, um, you know, you call for a limousine and they send you a city bus, uh, a slow city bus. Um, <laughs> NCTV programming must have equity with the commercial channels on Comcast's lineup. Part of the reason that this is so important is that uh, the commercial channels are designed to sell people things, while NCTV uh, programming is not in the business of selling anything. It's in the business of communicating from the citizens of Northampton to the citizens of Northampton. Um, but with that, I want to thank Comcast for providing the technology and revenue stream that supports NCTV. And I want to thank the city for its enlightened management of that resource. Um, without those two things, there would be no NCTV. The staff uh, have brought community media to a high level. They've developed a website that's won awards for two years in a row. But the technical limitations that hold them back are that their signal is standard definition analog, while all the rest of Comcast's commercial channels are high definition digital signals. <coughs> the reason for that is that the cable that connects NCTV's excellent studio to Comcast's facility is an old copper wire, and it needs to be uh, a fiber optic wire 
it needs to be the, I mean, a fiber optic uh, thing. <laughs> um, secondly, um, the program guide. Why isn't NCTV's programming on the guide? They do a good job of putting it up on their website, but most people that I've talked to don't know that they can find it, it there. And so they have the experience that was described a few minutes ago of simply surfing to NCTV when they're not watching the thing that they've looked up on some program guide. Uh, so in print and on NCTV's channels, I mean on Comcast channels, NCTV's programming should be listed in detail. Um, community television is famous for technical problems, for bad sound, etc. cetera. Um, if we got those upgrades, that wouldn't be the case. Thank you. And you can come right up. Uh, Pam, I think I have Pam Hunter. Oh, yeah. <coughs> Uh, my name is Pamela Hunter. I live at 55 Sheffield Lane in Florence, and I'm a former school committee member, and I was the first school committee uh, member of the board of directors of NCTV. And uh, so I feel like I've seen it from its beginning, and uh, most importantly, want it to continue. Um, I, I brought this with me because I have the record of the fact that the school department in the city gave, in effect, the space in the high school to NCTV to be the studio. So I feel that we have a responsibility to continue to use that studio for the benefit of the citizens and the students of Northampton. Um, and the, I, so I think it's really important to keep that school connection there. You've heard a lot of people talk about what has been available uh, for students and that has, we started with no students doing anything and now we have 10 to 12 interns a semester. We have. Um, used programming with uh, teachers and students in the building, the NCTV films and makes um, available events that students do. And it is the 21st century. Digital and media literacy is where our students need to be. And so this agreement with Comcast needs to reflect the fact that funding is needed. Uh, you've heard about the, the fiber connection. It's not right for our students to learn how to put things on, in effect, like on black and white or on Sanskrit, when everybody else is doing it with iPads and HD. <laughs> I mean, that we're not teaching kids correctly if they have to use outmoded methods. So that's one thing. Um, and I also think that the um, democracy and public outreach that NCTV both affects the, the people in Northampton, but particularly students. We need to be modeling students. What is democracy? What is media democracy? How can they have a voice? And how can that inform our citizenry uh, in Northampton? So I think it's really important, too, that some of this agreement, and once again, we do thank Comcast because the, the money that we all pay for our cable subscriptions does go toward uh, NCTV. But one of the things that we really need to make sure we have is upgraded equipment. And, and I would uh, advocate for some equipment upgrades so that once again our kids are using and, our, and the people in the Paradise City Press are using appropriate equipment so that you're not learning on something uh, that is really not going to be media standard. Um, we have had great facilities. We have an incredible staff. And as I was just saying to Al, if, N if NBC were producing some of the programs that we have, they might not get any better content, but they would definitely have better production values. Our production values are pretty good, but they could be better. So I think that the funding needs to reflect what the equipment and the connections that we need uh, there. So I want to thank everyone for having this enterprise and really make sure that we get the funding to support it going forward. Thank you. Thank you. Hello, my name is Jen Ramsey, uh, 21 Reservoir Road Leeds. I'm a resident of Northampton and I've been here for about six years and I love this city and what it has to offer. I was thrilled to discover the rich community center that is now Northampton Community Television. 
Um, I, I got a job there about two years ago, and I've worked there as the media resources coordinator, educating members, broadcasting public meetings, filming events and shows, and scheduling programs for broadcast. Um, we have a very active membership, and we offer many things, including multimedia education, hands-on production equipment trainings, advice, consultations, a place for free speech and expression, a physical space for creation, opportunities for nonprofits, and a great internship program. I've had many people come up to me and say that they've learned more at NCTV than they have in school. Um, I do want to point out there are a few issues, though, that I would like addressed. Um, our cable provider um, broadcast in standard definition. Um, you've heard that over and over today. Um, because we're connected by copper, um, and that results in a signal loss and poor quality broadcast. Um, I imagine this probably turns some people away from watching our channels, and um, because they're not anywhere near the quality of the other channels on broadcast TV. I want the residents of Northampton to feel like they have an equal voice in public TV, but if no one's watching because the quality is terrible, then they do not have an equal voice. So I urge you to please consider um, connecting NCTV via fiber and high definition broadcast. Um, I also want to see our public meetings filmed and broadcasted in high definition. So um, when we train new members, um, we train them on high definition equipment. However, our public meeting equipment is pretty outdated in standard definition. So I'd like that to be upgraded. Um, and I'd like to see our public meetings broadcast in HD as well. Um, with the full support of cap capital and operational money, we could upgrade the system and the quality of public meetings would be much more tolerable. The third important point I'd like to make is our broadcast schedule is listed as educational programming on the program guide on uh, Comcast. You've heard this over and over already, but um, I just want to urge you to please consider um, making our schedule available on the Comcast program guide. Um, in conclusion, City of Northampton and cable provider, I urge you both to allot the full operational and capital money available for public television in Northampton. Um, please connect us via fiber, please broadcast us in high definition, and please provide our program schedule on the uh, program guide. Thanks. Thank you, Jen. Um, just again, before you continue, there is a sign-up sheet for people who may have come late. I, I believe it's right next to Nar Narquit, so if you need to sign in, just uh, it's right there. Okay. Um, Good evening, Henry White. Uh, for coming, having this, uh, forum tonight. I want to talk about um, NCTV and how I got involved in it. Um, I went to NCTV for a few reasons. One is I wanted to, um, about five, a little over five years ago, living in Northampton, and I really wanted to start contributing uh, to the community in some kind of way because that's important to me. Um, and I also went there because a, another gentleman, a producer at the time, was doing some work in the community and I figured I'd start out by assisting him and just working with him on some projects. But the other part was I was beginning to feel a little frustrated with just where I was or where I, how I was feeling in the community. I was feeling like African American men like myself wasn't being perceived in a positive light. And it was frustrating to me. And um, I knew I wasn't going to jump up and down on Main Street and start screaming. Um, but I wanted to, to do something to, to change that perception. And uh, so I went to NCTV and I went to the staff there, in particular Al. And uh, I heard someone else say here earlier how he was just so receptive to them. And I can vouch for that. Um, he was, whatever you need, man, whatever you need, man, just let me know, just let me know. So he encouraged me and they, the staff encouraged me to take the video production course, which is uh, what I did. And I uh, remember that uh, test, Steve, as well. <laughs> um, and I got to be honest, the, the staff there was extremely, extremely patient. Their production courses and classes are first class. They um, work with novices like myself, and they also um, just make me made me feel um, very comfortable. From that course, I ended up working in the community along with them, be, quickly becoming engaged, covering city council meetings. I was taking out the video equipment, covering uh, activities in the community like the sidewalk sales. 
eventually um, started producing a talk show called Spotlighting Paradise, um, which has been well received in the community. Um, again, the staff, are all of them are just phenomenal. I would encourage Comcast to continue funding them 110%. Also, um, someone mentioned the program guide. NCTV given my, has given my show a primetime slot on Mondays at 8 p.m. However, there's other times that they show it, and people ask me on the streets, well, when can I catch your show? Be nice for me to say, just click on the remote and check the program guide on Comcast, and you can see other times that the show is being aired. So uh, thank you, and uh, Comcast, do the right thing. Peace. Hello, my name is Christy Spain. I live at 254 Spring Street in Florence. Um, and my husband and I have a music and dance studio called The Blue Guitar. Um, and we came to NCTV to produce um, programs highlighting uh, musicians and dancers in the community who have a lot of um, uh, talent and to offer, but there are very few venues um, for people to share their talents. And um, public television, our community television, is a perfect way to share that culture of all the local talent, um, to get that into people's homes um, and enrich um, the life of the community. Um, for many um, people, the, art, the arts are not something that you can support your family with, even in the best of circumstances. Our, our economy isn't very supportive of that. Uh, so many of the very talented people um, are known in the community in some other capacity. We did a show with Jonathan Stevens, for instance, who uh, runs the Hungry Ghost Bakery, who's a very talented songwriter, uh, very interesting man, um, and did a show with him that was very successful. Um, so I want to um, thank uh, uh, NCTV for being there and for their incredible patience in training us novices in editing and in producing. Um, I also want to say that um, our daughter, when she was at the high school, um, was an intern at NCTV at a time in her life when she wasn't sure she was good at anything. Um, and it gave her a whole new sense of self-worth and, more importantly, an, an idea of what a democracy really is, that you're not passive, that this word consumer that we're all, is always being shoved down our throats, you are a consumer, you are a consumer, is, is really a, a passive concept um, and better to understand what it means to be a citizen and a member of a community. Um, and she found she was good um, she, uh, at interviewing people and um, she got such incredible encouragement from Al Williams and Jeremy and the other people on the staff. Um, and she really found um, her, her sense of herself as part of a community. Um, so uh, my feeling is that NCTV, everything about it, um, benefits whoever touches it. It's sort of like this gold nugget in the, our community. At whatever level you make contact with it, as a producer or as a watcher of the shows or as a young person learning, you are benefiting from it. So the more we can support or increase their budget, um, the more um, everybody benefits from it. And I, I second the idea that um, things should be in HD so that it's of an equal um, production value with the rest of the programming. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. And just before uh, Matthew, you've um, come up, um, we have Rodney, Angelo, Joshua, Barbara Golden, and Stevie Converse in lines to speak. Go ahead, Matthew. Thanks. My name is Matthew Herschler. Uh, I live at 92 Laurel Park in Northampton, Massachusetts. I've been back here about a year. Uh, I haven't used the cable station yet here. I have used the cable station other places. I'm finishing a book on constitutional democracy, as a matter of fact, uh, this spring, putting it out, looking forward to doing a series of shows uh, through the cable station. Uh, I wanted to say that uh, I feel like uh, 
the public access to the media is a wonderful thing, and it's it's also simply civil recourse. And to see that it's civil recourse, to see that it's, I mean, civil recourse is great. It's how government works, you know. It's how communities solve their problems without fist fights. You know, civil recourse is wonderful, and public access to the media is one of the ways that people get to talk about and communicate about concerns that they potentially very much share, you know, uh, peaceful, productive uh, lives and streets and, um, and ways of moving forward uh, with regard to all the challenges we are facing. Uh, I feel like a, and I'm going to put on my glasses because I made some notes. Uh, uh, it's, it's, so it's how we work. The, uh, the use of the station has been growing. Uh, this is because it's a wonderful resource, and it's also because it's necessary. Uh, people, you know, civil recourse is, you know, when you have problems, you have to, you have to have civil recourse, and it's amazing to have such, a, uh, to have this resource, and it's important because of that that it keeps up with the technology, and uh, and is also available. The other thing about civil recourse is it's not just that people get up, get to stand up and wave their hands; it's that someone actually hears them. And so making, you know, making sure the signal is good and making sure that it's listed on the X1 and X2 stations seems very important to fulfilling, uh, making it truly serve the community in the way that it needs to. Uh, uh, thank you. I think that's enough. Uh, I won't look at my the rest of my notes. Yeah. <laughs> thank yeah. you. Good evening. Good evening. Good to see you. Good to see all of you. Thank you for the meeting. And thank you for holding this meeting. My name is Rodney. 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 Good. With NC Television, it is the I am to I miss 100%. And why is no closed captioning? I'm very disappointed. And I'm very disappointed. I've been asking for closed captioning for many, many years. And nothing has been done about it. It is a violation of civil rights. It's a violation the of civil and, rights. And people. people. And when people get old, they cannot even well, move. Old, they have to read. They don't hear well. Get information they from the city council meetings. They need closed captioning so they can get the information from the city council meetings. So my request is... My request? And CTV will have good caption put in as soon as possible. Put in as soon as possible. Please, uh, please understand that we deaf people need it too badly. I'm a deaf bay. I pay for them cuts. I pay for the city of Northampton. I paid for the city of Northampton. And I don't get any information from the city council meetings. For the city council. And, uh, yeah, the boot. And I need your support. The city council will do it. Do it. The city council will do it. And I'm hoping that the city council will recommend that we have closed captioning. Recommend that we have closed captioning. Give me the discussion. On community television. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Good evening. My name is Angelo Rhoda. I'm the Director of Educational Technology uh, for the Northampton Public Schools. Uh, as an educator, uh, when I hear about NCTV and how students are using their facilities and their resources to create multimedia and video, uh, I think about a conference I was at a couple of months ago where the uh, chief evangelist for Google made a presentation 
And during his presentation, he showed his 11-year-old son on the couch in the living room with two laptops. On one laptop, he's on the internet playing an internet game, and on the other laptop, he's learning how to play the game. So the power of video and how kids learn now cannot be understated. They have to have those resources, and those who can work with video and learn how to make video and help others to learn, just fantastic opportunities. As the tech director and also a representative of Manhattan Public Schools, I would echo what Vanessa Kendo said earlier about our wide area network, our fiber optic needs, the carrying capacity for data, for voice. Uh, a lot of our services in the school depend on the wide area network just to do day-to-day -day things to, to get our staff the uh, requirements, the uh, resources that they need so they can conduct daily business. And of course, with voice, safety is everything. As we see all the time on the news, safety in schools, having a phone system that works, having emergency systems arrive and being able to communicate those needs to the proper authorities, it doesn't get any more important than that. So I uh, ask for your support in that area for the fiber optic and, and the WAN, and also your support with NCTV so we can also use their resources. Thank you very much. Thank you. Hello, my name is Joshua Braska. I live at 155 Carew Street in Chicopee. I am with, uh, also do work with Valley Free Radio right here in Florence. Uh, everybody has pretty much been singing the praises of Northampton Community Television all day, and, and I could probably do it for another three to seven minutes. Uh, but there's some things that we probably all agree on. Uh, one is that NCTV is really here to stay, whether or not Comcast stays or not. Uh, NCTV is a valuable resource, and no matter what happens with the contract negotiation, they're going to be here one way or another. Uh, the other thing that I kind of feel we pretty much agreed on is that one way or another Comcast contract will be renewed in one form or another. And the real question is whether or not we are going to get the HD and the fiber optics and the detailed program guide and closed captioning that we all want. Uh, the real question is why? Why should we do that? Why, why bother with HD or why bother with fiber optics or the program guide? Uh, and I think the answer is pretty much everybody here can agree that it needs to be done and it should be done and it's the right thing to do. Uh, I don't think that really anybody can argue with that. Uh, why should we be in HD? Because everybody else is. And it sets us apart that we have such a vibrant community in media and it should set us apart that we have an HD community television station. We should also be able to perform day-to-day -day activities and all the other uh, responsibilities that me the media uh, provides for us with fiber optics and, and do that the right way. Uh, there's no sense in being cheap. We should do this the right way the first time. And the detailed program guide, that just makes sense to everybody as well. I don't really see how anybody could say that we shouldn't do that. Um, giving the consumer what they want is something that uh, a company like Comcast should be able to provide and it's something they should do. Uh, but if we're gonna talk about dollars and cents, yeah, dollars and cents, the, then um, anybody who supports uh, NCTV would be more than willing to get a subscription to Comcast, if not just to be able to see their son or daughter's performance or production on TV uh, for the first time. So I ask that if hopefully when negotiations start, we can not, not just pretend that we are going to be asking about whether or not we should do it, but why, and definitely that we should be uh, doing this because it's the right thing to do. My name is Jaime Alvarez, Dr. Alvarez. I am a retired educator who have been living 21 years in Northampton and prior to that 17 years in Amherst. I have produced programs that have been aired in Amherst, in Greenfield, Northampton, Springfield, Westfield, and even Holyoke. I'm here with three requests, one for the mayor, one for Comcast, and one for NCTV. The first request is to the mayor, asking him to consider making 
as part of the necessary requirement for the next contract to change that cable, that connection from analog to digital, number one. Number two, to study a formula by which in the future, we won't be asking for handouts yearly, but a percentage of the income, however minute might be, a percentage of the income produced in the city to be turned into the contribution of the Comcast contractor to the community television station. The next is say request to come cast. I am requesting the mayor to negotiate a formula by which the yearly contribution of the contractor, in this case Comcast or whoever do, does it, is a percentage of the income or the revenue produced for its operations in Northampton. It, it is that right now. Yes, but needs to be upgraded. I need to be upgraded based on a consideration that hopefully a committee will come up with. As prices increase, as usage increase, there may be a formula by which instead of asking for handouts, there is established formula. So if the business go up, income goes up, if the business go down. Right now we have proportional increases because it's a flat percentage. So if the rates go up, the allocation goes up because it's a percentage. Thank you. My, my suggestion is that to have a committee study a way to improve the income because the income makes it so. The second is a request to Comcast. I would like you to become an example, a national example, by which you find ways, and maybe a committee again will do that, to become a partnership in which the local community station and the contractor, in this case you, are partners in developing not in competing. So far, in my opinion, Comcast has dealt with the NCTV as a competitor that needs to be kept as analog, as a, as, a post, uh, as a child that you don't really want to have in your family. <laughs> <laughs> so you downgrade it. You keep it at the minimum expression. I want to find a way by which Comcast will lift NCTV, not only in the HD level, at the digital, not only in the budget, but in, a, in innovative ways, innovative ways that will be an example, a national example, a flagship of some effort that Comcast will do with community televisions. Finally, my request to the staff. We have a vibrant community, speaking of values, we have a multicultural community. I would like you to find ways to reflect that in your programming. It's not enough of all the communities. So my suggestion is that in your programming, you find ways to reflect that richness that we have in this community. Thank you very much. Barbara Golden, 48 Evergreen, Leeds. I have a son and daughter who grew up in Northampton and I appreciate NCTV's work with the youth in this area. Among other things, NCTV shoots many events at the schools, including the Northampton High School graduation, and trains high school interns on how to use the equipment and make videos. There's one family that couldn't make it tonight and the mother of one of the Jakes said this about NCTV. The staff and resources have been instrumental in helping her son move with clarity in the direction of his passion and hopefully his profession. As a citizen, I've spoken before the City Council and Planning Board and believe it's very important that NCTV films these and other city boards and committees and makes these meetings available to people who cannot come to the meetings in person due to time conflicts or being homebound 
and I would agree that we should have the closed caption. NCTV brings meetings into people's living rooms and connects people to the community. It also makes our government more transparent by bringing what happens at the city meetings to people to see and hear. NCTV helps make Northampton a community where people are in touch with each other. It gives a voice to local people, enabling them to contribute to their community and builds the strength of the community. Because I feel NCTV, local media, is so important to a community, I would like to see detailed program listings for NT NCTV on Comcast platforms, and this has been mentioned many times, and on any future on-screen program guides. So we're talking about the future also, because we don't know how it's going to develop. With detailed program listings, people will be able to find NCTV programs and know what the schedule is on the stations. They will be able to schedule recordings of these programs, and I'm not sure if this has been mentioned tonight, but um, right now you can't schedule recordings the way it is. And they'll know which ones are captioned, because there are some programs that are captioned that come from other um, media if they're hard of hearing. At present, Comcast does not support providing this information and functionality to our community. In this regard and other matters, HD and fiber connection, we should be treated equitably with other channels on cable. I also want to second what other people have said about uh, wishing there was an office still here. I had to drive all the way out to wherever it is. I didn't recognize the area, actually. And uh, not only that, but I waited in a huge line, and there was only one person working the desk, and it was uh, several hours before I got up there. So I would second Mary Ann Labarge and everybody else's desires for an office here. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> And before Stevie comes up, just to give you a lineup, we have Jonathan Reed, Richard, Richard Wagner, Susan Timberlake, mm -hmm. Kathy Reggae, mm -hmm. Alex Russo, Brad Andrews, and Kate Way. Just to give you a. I am uh, Stevie Converse. John Reed. Oh. Are you I'm on this Jonathan list here? Reed. Jonathan Reed. Okay. Good go. Yeah, I'll, let, I'll, I'll have Stevie come up right after you then. Perfect. Okay, I'm sorry. No, I thought no, no, he was problem. first. Go ahead, Jonathan. Okay. Uh, 3 Hampton Avenue in Northampton. Um, I thought I'd share a little personal piece and then maybe hit on a couple big picture things. So a couple years ago, uh, I had been a founding board member of Hidden Tech for about 10 years, putting on local events, kind of like this one, I got really burned out. Um, and I was looking for a different way to get involved in the community. And we put on a program at Amherst Community Television where I met Al Williams. And uh, almost immediately a light bulb kind of went off because I'm a tech journalist and I was starting to do more video and I thought this would be a great way for me to kind of get back and remember uh, uh, just just about a month later starting to meet the team down there and before you know it I'm like manning one of the cameras at a city council meeting Dave over there's barking instructions in my ear <laughs> and I was just smiling from ear to ear and I'm sure some of you have had those moments where you realize that you're going to make a different kind of connection like a light bulb kind of thing and it can really change your life in a certain way and I remember like going home just like I was a kid and calling my mom and just being like you won't believe it's so cool blah blah and uh, since then I've done a bunch of stuff locally I've uh, filmed events like local hackathons working with nonprofits um, and the cool thing about it is in some of these situations had I not been there that event wouldn't have been recorded or televised and that's a pretty meaningful thing and so when you take a step back and you look at a couple really disturbing trends in our culture I think one of them is just the state of media I don't know if you saw this week but MSNBC cut off from a congresswoman uh, talking about NSA and security issues to get an update on Justin Bieber's status in Florida <laughs> and if that's the state of our national news like what about these local stories? How are they going to get told? Well, I think you have a partial answer in NCTV. And then the other piece of it is simply education and the future of work. And you look at our schools, and are they aligned with what we're going to need in the workforce? I, I joke that future jobs are either going to be designing robots, fixing robots, or fighting robots. But I think there's also going to be a real need for media literacy. And I think NCTV TV can play a huge role in that locally so I'd just like to see you encourage that now as far as funding is concerned I'm not an expert in the financial matters in play here I can tell you from my Comcast bill that they can afford it um, and as far as the city of Northampton is concerned I think you have to find a way 
to also kick in on this because television is not just an entertainment medium. It's, it's a vehicle for how we communicate in the world. And not only that, but it's not just about passive consumption anymore. It's about community involvement and engagement. And I think you can see that evidence here tonight. And I would just like to say, let's double down on that and do even more. Uh, I think that's it. Thanks. Thank you. I'll time myself. <laughs> <laughs> My name is Stevie Converse, and I live and work in Florence. I'm an outreach manager at Free Press, a nonprofit public interest organization dedicated to creating media policy that helps us all connect and communicate. I've been involved with NCTV since the last contract negotiations around 2005. At that time, NCTV studio was in the Comcast building on Bradford Street. The space was hardly ever open, and it was difficult to find out about trainings and how to produce a show there. And since that time, I've witnessed a, the dramatic tr transformation of a neglected and underused peg station into a vibrant community media center with a robust community presence. And my experience with NCTV is that it exists to help any community member succeed in whatever media effort they're looking to do. Uh, when my job at Free Press transitioned from a text-based to a multimedia position, I was kind of at a loss and I took the training at NCTV, which was a tremendous help to my new position. It helped me hang on to my job, in fact. So in even today, I'll still run a camera for a city council meeting every now and then. And uh, I love it. And I often watch the city council meetings on TV. And this, to me, is an invaluable service, being able to watch our government in action. I want to see those meetings and all the programming on NCTV in HD. I pay for HD. I pay Comcast to get HD. And I want NCTV in HD. I want to see my community station have equal status with every other station out there. I want to have the same picture quality and the same sound quality that all the other uh, channels have. Also, being in media policy, as long as I have, I know that, as we've been talking about, copper wires are very outdated. I want to see Comcast replace their connection to NCTV with fiber. The reasons are obvious, better audio and video, uh, quality, and better capacity for the future. Thanks so much. Thanks, Steve. And uh, Richard? Hi, my name is Richard Wagner. I live at 48 Lyman Road. Um, I'm here to speak as an individual, as a private citizen, um, and reflect on my experience with NCTV. As a volunteer, I helped my friends at the Happy Valley Guitar Orchestra, which is one of the great cultural gems of the valley, um, make a short video. Uh, we shot in the uh, studio at NCTV, 20 guitars wailing away with four cameras running. Um, we were able to produce the just short three, four minute video, um, but wherein the HVGO could highlight not only their art but their organization. Without having four cameras, it, it, it could have been done, would have been harder, wouldn't have been as good. Um, so then I want to take that and put it in a, a sort of broader context. And that context is Northampton itself as a community that became known for a vibrant arts scene. And one of the reasons it had that scene is because it had it had an environment and ecosystem which supported artists in, um, in what it takes to make art beyond just having the creative mind to do it. You need space. You need a way to make yourself known. You need to be able to present your art. NCTV helped directly with that for HVGO. We made a nice video in HD. It would be very nice if it could be viewable at NCTV in HD. Um, we made a nice video. It would be it would be nice to have it known that it was made, and a program guide that broke things down so you knew what was playing would help with that. Um, I'll end it. NCTV helped um, HVGO 
in their efforts to make themselves known, in their efforts to get their art out to a larger audience. Um, and without it, it would have been a lot harder. That's all. Hi there. Sue Timberlake, 190 Spring Grove Avenue. And uh, I feel a little funny because I went back and read the old um, hearing uh, from last time. And all the issues were about the TV studio and how bad it was. And obviously, it's come a very, very long way. Um, one of the things uh, that I've sorted out in my mind is that um, that NCTV is actually a private nonprofit. And so some of the comments should be directed towards that board things like the quality of the signal from the city council meeting, because there is a $400,000 budget. And so that board, I think, should really consider some of the issues that people brought up today. I had a couple of them, too. You know, some of the sound from the city council meeting, when I got um, a really nice sound bar, I started to hear all this noise underneath the signal. That's a problem from the city council room, and that's easily repairable. As to the scroll and people talking about not finding the programming, I, too, am frustrated with that because I try and figure out when the city council meetings are on. And um, other cable companies actually run a scroll underneath the cable access so that when you flip to the channel, you can actually see when the meetings are on. I would encourage NCTV's board to put on more, uh, more meetings of governmental. I don't like turning it on and seeing Tom Hartman and other people on that channel because it's the government channel. So I'm going to switch away from NCTV because that's really what you guys have been hearing about. And I want to talk about Comcast for a minute because this is really the Comcast license ascertainment hearing. And so Comcast gives $400,000 to NCTV, but they take it from all the subscribers. And anything that the city negotiates, Comcast will try, forgive me, where's, um, hi, sorry. Um, Comcast will try to take um, out of the budget of NCTV. So they'll reduce the $400,000 to try and upgrade the optical fiber network for the city. And I just, I want to make sure people understand that because it's a really important point, which is why all the NCTV folks are here because they don't want the budget reduced. And it's a great service and I was on a cable access board in my old town and I totally understand how great it is. But just a couple of things. One is that I think the Comcast signal is poor in the city of Northampton. And I say that because you'll flip on a channel and it's just like satellite. You see it jitter? I'm, I'm sure if you have Comcast at home, sometimes you've seen that, usually about 6 or 7 o'clock. And I think it's because they haven't upgraded the infrastructure in the city. And that's something that the city doesn't have to pay for. That's something that Comcast should do. So I'm asking the Cable Advisory Board to ask for um, an as-built plan of the wiring for Northampton, because you will see that there are places in town when you sign up for Comcast, they split the signal with another household. So I'm saying that the city of Northampton doesn't know that they don't have an upgraded infrastructure. Also, for the city um, use, I heard somebody say about the optical fiber. Um, I, I think that's a great idea if that's what the city has between the buildings and, and all that. A couple other quick notes. I don't know how much time I have left. Um, was that it? <laughs> anyway, I'll probably submit some comments in writing, but I just want people to hear that about, this is about Comcast and the quality of the Comcast product. Thank you. Hi, everyone. Can, can you hear me? Yes. Great. My name is Kathy Bergali, and I live on 3 Greenwood Lane in South Hadley. And I'm here tonight um, representing myself and my colleagues, Al and um, Dave, and Dave's predecessor, Gary, um, did a film for me, for me and my colleagues. It was a film uh, made at the Hampshire County Jail in Northampton, and it uh, captured our labyrinth program and the construction of probably the first 80-foot uh, outdoor green labyrinth within the secure perimeter of a jail in the country. To me, this is Hollywood. Um, <laughs> and uh, in order to get this film done, I did write to um, Ken Burns, and he wrote me a very nice letter saying that he was tied up for the next five years and couldn't <laughs> come and do the film. And I also sought a couple of other area filmmakers who um, did an estimation for us, and it was way beyond our budget. 
and my last um, hope and my last chance was Al, wherever he is, Al. And um, he did, in the beginning, feel that our project was bigger than the scope of what Northampton Cable TV would normally take on and pretty much, you know, was, I think, going to give me a no for an answer. And uh, then he gave me a little tour of the studio and whatever. And uh, by the time we got back to his office, he said he would do this project for us. Um, a little update on our film. It has been viewed locally, nationally, and internationally. It's um, on YouTube, thanks to Dave, and um, has over 2,000 views. And I personally have heard from people from Africa, Australia, Canada, all over the globe. And while it's a small niche and labyrinths aren't, many people don't know about labyrinths and the resurgence they're making in this world and the impact that they have had on the incarcerated men at the jail, um, it's educating people and the word is getting out. And for that, I have Al, wherever he is, Dave, and Dave's predecessor, Gary, to thank. Um, let's see. Oh, we have also, as a result of this whole PR and recognition that we've gotten because of the documentary, which is right here, um, we have an article published in the Journal of Forensic Nursing. Our team has presented in Atlanta, Georgia, and in an international correction, co correctional conference in Canada on this project. So uh, I love you guys. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you. I think next up we have Alex. Uh, hi, my name is Alex Russo. I live at 13 Park Street in Florence. Uh, I am speaking as a longtime Florence resident. I grew up here. I went to Northampton High School. Um, and I've used NCTV as the resource that it is for a great many years. I remember uh, NCTV showed up the year after I graduated from high school. And that still burns me up <laughs> because as someone who's really interested in multimedia, uh, the opportunity that high school students get having this television station in the high school is extremely beneficial. Um, and to the community as well, of course, but uh, the, the kind of training that NCTV can offer is extremely impressive. Uh, I mean, they have, they use software that is professionally used and they can train members in how to use it professionally. So you could really get a lot out of the station depending on what you want to do. If you want to just produce a simple program to put up, uh, you can totally do that. They'll help you do that and it will come out great. But if you want to go that extra mile and learn how to incorporate things like motion graphics, uh, they have the software for that. They can train you in it. And they offer courses and training pretty regularly. So the kind of benefit that this offers the community is there's a lot of depth to it and people can get a lot out of it on even a professional level. And the idea that high school students uh, get access to this, which if they're interested in going into video production as a career, is hugely beneficial. Uh, and a lot of other communities I don't think offer this kind of depth of training. Uh, so for those reasons, I really want to encourage Comcast to both renew the contract but also to expand on the budget that they provide for NCTV because, uh, as it's been talked about earlier, their uh, equipment for live broadcast and for city council is somewhat outdated and it could definitely use some upgrading. And uh, the fact that you can produce such high quality content that content deserves to be delivered to the public in the highest quality that it can be. Thank you. Thank you. Brad, Brad <coughs> Hi. Uh, my name is Brad Andrews. I live at 24 Catherine Street in North Adams, Massachusetts. Um, I am an intern at Northampton Community TV. And as you just heard, yes, I travel all the way to here from North Adams by Pack Mule if I have to. <laughs> and. Uh, I just wanted to speak on behalf of NCTV as an educational resource for the community. Um, I didn't think I could get 
um, an education beyond what I got in film school, but I wound up getting that with NCTV. And I used to have a professor who was a documentary film studies professor who used to always say, support public broadcasting. And I never understood what he meant by that until I worked with NCTV. And um, when I've done stories around the community, people know immediately that I'm with NCTV. They go, oh my god, are you with NCTV? They're happy to see me. They're happy to work with me. Um, and I feel like a part of this community thanks to the work that I've done with them. And um, also just speaking, uh, I'll try to be terse, uh, on behalf of uh, just the film studies course at the high school, I've seen them at work and honestly, if I was as talented as they were and as well trained as they were coming out of high school, I never would have went to film school. And I think that's the kind of education that they're offering. And um, yeah, everyone's saying support them 110%, uh, I'll go 120. Uh, this is a beautiful community, I think it deserves NCTV. Thank you. Lee arrived in on a plane this evening, and I, if I had seen her earlier on, I would have called her because she came. Um, she was the former chair of the board, and uh, she came specifically from a flight to be here. I apologize that I didn't get her here, but I would like to state for the record that Lee Bailey did come to um, submit comments, and I'm sure she will submit um, some written comments. Go ahead, Kate. And, and as noted, just a procedural point, the record is uh, remaining open for further public participation and comment. Go ahead, Kate, sorry. Hi, um, my name is Kate Way, and uh, I live at 30 National Road in Williamsburg. And I've, uh, I'm a member of the Board of Directors of NCTV for the past four years. Uh, before this fall, I was an English teacher at Northampton High School for nine years. And I am also a doctoral student at UMass studying education and media. And um, I'm also a photographer, a documentary photographer. So in, in all of those respects, I wanted to speak about NCTV and uh, the incredible work that's being done and the importance of sustaining this essential resource in our community. Um, first, I just wanted to say as a classroom teacher when I was at NHS, uh, I integrated a lot of multimedia work into my curriculum. Uh, in all of my classes, and I was able to direct my students to NCTV as a, as a resource for training, uh, for, for their own production, and for further education. Um, when I taught media literacy in particular at the high school, my class uh, visited, and Al uh, did a great presentation for us on you know, elements of, of television production and the role of community media. And later, many of my students told me that these were, you know, some of their most powerful learning experiences at the high school. Uh, several of my students went on to uh, apply for internships, as we've heard from many people tonight. And I know that uh, several have gone on to study communications at, at the college level. So I think that had a huge impact for them. Uh, in terms of my own work as a photographer, uh, I took some of NCTV's production classes in uh, trying to translate some of my photography into video work, and I was um, consistently just uh, blown away by the breadth of knowledge, the skill, the professionalism of all of the staff members at NCTV, their willingness to spend time and energy mentoring me, learning new technologies, uh, and uh, I just can't thank them enough for the support they've given to me personally in the last few years. From the citizen journalism program to the awarding of artist production grants, which I don't think has been mentioned by anyone yet tonight, uh, to the coverage of the city government meetings, which we've heard a lot about, NCTV is engaging, uh, supporting, and empowering Northampton residents, and really is serving as a national model of what community media centers can and should be, I think. Uh, at a time when we're up against so much commercialism and, and a real lack of diversity in our mainstream media, as, as we've heard from so many, <laughs> not sure what that signal means, um, I think it's more important now than ever to, to continue to support uh, NCTV as a, as a community resource and to increase support. 
So thank you. Thanks, Kate. Um, at this point, we're on the last section of the, the people, so I'm just going to read, up, read out the lineup. I have Benjamin Bradley Gilbert, Peter Blanchett, Lisa Downey, Sujali, and I believe Alexandra Alvarez left. Um, Al, um, Dr. Alvarez did uh, testify. Al Williams, um, Bill Dwight, City Council President, Jean Hoos and Lenore Brick. So just to give you a sense of where you are, and that's uh, and we have one video testimony um, that we will show at the very end. Hello, uh, my name is Benjamin Bradley Gilbert. I'm a student at Northampton High School. Um, I'm in 11th grade, and about a year ago, I discovered NCTV. Um, before then, I had been making short films with my friends and with my little consumer model camcorder. But um, upon finding NCTV, I discovered a whole treasure trove of uh, cameras and microphones and light equipment that I had never really dreamed of ever being able to use. Um, more recently, I applied for an art grant through NCTV to produce a short narrative film, and I received that grant. Um, they were nice enough to give me and my production team of students $2,000, and um, about a month ago, we cast our uh, six-member student cast for our film. Um, half of them are from NHS, and half of them are from the Pioneer uh, performing Arts School, uh, PVPA, um, and I'm really, really excited about that. In addition, we are also working with um, several adult actors from around the valley, um, some of which I knew for, um, through other people that I know, and some of which I've never met before. Um, uh, and I'm really excited about this. this. This project has been something that I've been working up to um, pretty much every day now. I recently applied for a capstone class to um, take some time out of my day in school and come down to NCTV and keep working on the project. Um, and that's something that we're going to start shooting in about three weeks. And I hope that if we are to get HD broadcasting on this channel, I can show the entire uh, community of Northampton and beyond um, this great 45 minute film that we're working on, um, as well as being able to show off the, the plays that I've uh, shot for our school. Uh, we've shot Alice in Wonderland. We've shot um, Rosencrantz and Guildenstern Are Dead, directed by Steve Eldridge, who was here earlier today. Um, and I also am really excited to see where this TV production class goes into the future with um, collaborating with NCTV and the school. Um, and also, the closed captioning. Um, I make a lot of films, a lot of foreign language films, um, and having closed captioning would be really great for our audiences who don't speak the languages that we are speaking in or who don't speak English. Um, and I'd also like to be able to show my friends the films that I make, the, um, the short films, the long films, the documentaries, the English films, the uh, chemistry films. Um, they ask me, they say, hey, how can I watch these films? Oh, well, they're online. Oh, that's cool, but I want to watch them on TV. Can't you do that on TV? And I say, yeah, you can do them on TV, but unfortunately, there is no channel listing. So if we got that, I could really um, refer all my friends over to NCTV and they can see my films. Thank you. Hi everyone, I'm Peter Blanchett. I live at 41 Valley Street here in Northampton and I'm the founding director of the uh, before mentioned uh, Happy Valley Guitar Orchestra. And I just, because so many people have said so many positive things uh, that I can only second, I'm sitting there listening to them. Uh, it made me feel really great to hear it. Uh, Al and Jen have been very kind to my organization in its growth. Uh, and. I just want to focus on one little detail because maybe that will be helpful because I think this is a very important issue. And that's the, uh, the listing, the inclusion of program information in the listing. I could talk about other things, but you don't have enough time. So uh, the listing, how that can help uh, a new 501c3 organization like mine is 
like this in Northampton. There's a lot of interest in the community in our organization uh, because we involve, you know, 23 musicians. They all have families and they all watch TV and their friends watch TV and they're interested in us. So they're always looking for ways to connect with us. Uh, there's real strong interest in that. And television is obviously the greatest medium to meet uh, the needs of, of, of communicators, you know, invented so far. So uh, for, for, for a group like us, it can help us be seen. People watch TV at the gym while they're, uh, and you, how would I know that? I don't know, but I do. Um, <laughs> I've heard they watch it at the gym. But, um, <laughs> And, and so uh, the, the ability to access that programming is very important to people. I absolutely know that for a fact. And I just want the Comcast folks to know that this is the kind of place where you have a chance to brand yourself uh, as, a, as a company that delivers content uh, that's balanced in this particular way so that the people in a town who make a lot of their own content with the wonderful help of NCTV in all the ways it's been mentioned, um, you know, they might actually turn that TV on and have a subscription so they can watch this content. That's why they may do it. And then once in a while they may turn something on like the Super Bowl too. <laughs> so anyway, that's what I have to say. Thanks very much. Thank you. Hi, my name is Lisa Downing and I live at 23 Beechwood Avenue in East Hampton. I'm here um, as a staff member of the Forbes Library, um, Northampton's public library. And we've been collaborating with uh, NCTV um, for several years now and it's been very productive and I just wanted to talk about a few ways in particular. Um, I think one thing as a librarian that hasn't really been mentioned tonight is the permanent record that the videos that are created, some of the local history content, the cultural content, offers and uh, we are the beneficiary of we, we receive um, a lot of the government recording the city council meetings they are recorded and brought over to the library and these are real resources for researchers we've had uh, decision makers lawyers students homeowners a variety of people come and need to use those now and into the future and I see um, as a librarian that the video content is really um, the per creating a permanent record of what's going on of these great 501c3s of um, cultural and local history programming is, is what it, what's going to be sought after years from now. So I'm looking into the future as, as that, the importance of that and I just wanted to state that. Um, I also, as uh, the library does a lot of programming that we're fortunate enough to have um, recorded many, much of it for NCTV and we hear from people that are either unable to come out at night, uh, housebound in general and they'll be watching and very appreciative. So we really now look at the, the, what's being aired as an expansion of the audience of the people that actually make it into the room that night and I think the listings, the closed captioning, all these things to make things more accessible. Um, would just be wonderful and I'm, I fully support that. Uh, the training and consultation that we've had, we work, we've done a collaborative grant with NCTV staff for youth. Um, we actually have one of our board members and one of our staff have gotten involved and they've, they all echo and I won't go on about how wonderful the training and the access to the equipment in the studio is. Uh, and and that's, that's something that's real, like for instance, the library is looking to create a video, uh, an introductory video that can be posted on our website and people are expecting this kind of video content. This is how a lot of youth uh, learn and, and, and want to receive information these days. But also, like for instance, uh, people on the autism spectrum disorder or people who are learning English want to be able to uh, be introduced to something through a video format that they may be able to watch over again. Um, and, and then that sets the tone and then they'll come in. And I can see that's just one example that, that's here, but I'm sure there's lots of other examples of how this video content really has powerful, educational, um, inclusive um, properties that I just wanted to emphasize. Uh, Paradise City Press uh, is another very important um, uh, uh, thing that I just wanted to mention briefly. I was at a conference of librarians and we're hearing so much about how there's, there's a local news glut, that so much, so much local media is closing and um, what we have access to is just not of a local nature. And I believe that that's really important and again echoes that, that aspect of creating a permanent record of our culture. Um, in closing, I would like to urge Comcast to be fully support NCTV um, with that upgrade so that it's the, the best uh, broadcasting standard it can be. Thank you.
Hi, uh, I'm Sat Jolly, 60 Masonic Street in Northampton. I've lived here uh, since 1985. I'm also a professor at the University of Massachusetts, um, the Department of Communication, and I'm also the executive director of the Media Education Foundation in Northampton. Uh, actually, by this time in the in the meeting, it's inevitable you're going to start repeating yourself or repeating what other people said. So, I'd like to frame my comments at the broader level of how community access television stations such as NCTV fit into how we think about free speech and our basic democratic rights. Uh, the philosophical underpinning of the First Amendment is the diversity of speech. Lots of different voices is what provides vibrancy and energy to the democratic process. The more voices, the, be the better. And the more different voices, the better. Uh, the role of government, um, federal, state, local, uh, is to, in this context is to act proactively to ensure that the largest number of people are able to participate meaningfully in the marketplace of ideas. As a vast amount of what takes place in our media system, of which cable is the prime example, is of a commercial nature. It's imperative that the spaces are provided for non-commercial speech. Uh, on television, about the only place that happens is on community access stations such as NCTV. So I think we're dealing with very deep issues here about the kind of society we want to live in. Uh, the language of the modern age is now audiovisual. Um, I wish it was something else, but it's not. That's, that's how we now communicate. And if you want to participate in that democratic culture, then it's necessary that you not only have the skills to be able to communicate in this medium, but that there's a place where your voice can be heard by other people. And that's the priceless value of NCTV to the city of Northampton. Uh, they offer the training and the, and the equipment to allow people to become literate in this new world, uh, a basic requirement, I think, of civic participation. Uh, they also provide a space where this can happen, a, a studio uh, that is becoming uh, quickly becoming too small from the demand from the community. So I hope the city will, look, will be looking for ways to expand NCTV's training and production capacity. Uh, literacy in production is just one part of what government should be providing or encouraging. The other is to ensure widespread distribution so the community will be able to see and hear what its citizens are thinking and doing. Uh, maximizing the number of channels devoted to this kind of programming is very important, as is ensuring the technical ca capabilities offered by the cable provider uh, uh, offered by the cable provider are on an equitable footing with the rest of the commercial programming. Again, as many people have pointed out, uh, in that regard, it's not just video that's the language of the modern age, it's HD video. And it's vital that N uh, NCTV's programming be offered in this format, which is quickly becoming the minimum, the minimum acceptable standard for being able to communicate. I must admit, when I watch TV, <laughs> unless the signal's in HD, my fingers are very quickly hit the change button and I'm on to something else, and I'm sure I'm not alone. So again, I hope the city will ensure that the Comcast uh, contract provides access to HD channels for NCTV's programming. Uh, in conclusion, as I mentioned, I teach at the university and my own direct experience of NTV's impact uh, is based on how it's uh, increased my audience beyond the academy. Um, I've made about 75 of my film lectures available to NCTV uh, to program at its convenience and I've had many conversations over the last few years, a lot of them on the street, with people who have seen them and want to engage in a conversation about their content. Uh, I'm very grateful that NT, uh, NCTV exists and I hope the city in its negotiations with Comcast will do all it can to make sure that it continues and, and in fact expands its work and its activities. Thank you. Professor, uh, what, what is the nonprofit you're on? I'm just involved in media matters, so I was curious. Uh, the media Education Foundation. Uh, hello, I'm Al Williams. I'm the executive director of Northampton Community Television. Um, it's tremendous to see this kind of support uh, come out of the community tonight, uh, especially considering that in 2007 there was some question as to how viable uh, an independent nonprofit organization run by the community um, would, what kind of success that organization would have. And I think what we've demonstrated in that time is that we are successful that uh, when we are well funded and when we are run by the community, then the results are um, extremely positive. Uh, NCTV has won a number of national awards, uh, best website in the United States two years consecutively for two different websites in community media. Um, our usage numbers have skyrocketed over the last, uh, since 2008 when we began tracking those numbers. We had about 100 uh, daily uses as we call them. and over 2,000 last year. So 2,000, so that's a 200% increase in, um, in usage by that community. Um, so 
the, the issue really that the city has to face moving forward is what kind of exchange they want in, uh, for Comcast's utilization of what is public land, public right of way. Um, and we believe that, that NCTV, supporting NCTV as a resource is really a good investment for the city. Um, we also believe very strongly that we should be treated equitably to other, other channels that are carried by Comcast. We can't buy standard definition equipment. It's impossible. Um, the next set of cameras we have will shoot in higher, higher resolutions than high def. Um, soon it's going to be difficult to buy HD equipment. So the fact that we're not broadcast in that standard is frankly unacceptable. Um, it's treating, in my opinion, the community like second class citizens. That's the community whose public land is being used. And that's the community that is actually providing profit for Comcast as a cable provider. I'd hope that Comcast would look at this as an opportunity to support, to support a success story in community media. Thank you. Hello, um, I'm Bill Dwight. I am the former chair, first chair, of Northampton Community Television. And the only thing I can take credit for is I presided over the hiring of Al Williams. <laughs> <laughs> I'm, also, I'm also the city council president of the city of Northampton. And I'd like to say that what an enormous difference from 10 years ago when we were appealing for the meagerest of, of community access systems and what we got was due to the fact that we had an advisory board that stuck to it and fought for a strong, robust contract with Comcast. Now, these, this ascertainment and this, this contract stuff is, is actually a little bit of kabuki theater. We know, there's not a lot of competing interests here that we're fighting over. Comcast, like many other uh, cable, major cable providers in the country, are obliged to go through this because they are essentially given sanction monopolies for regions. Comcast is it. We don't have another choice. Well, just, uh, legal, oh, please. Yeah, Bill. Legal footnote that the last, uh, the current license cable franchise, which I worked on with the cable committee, is a non-exclusive franchise. There is no monopoly. There is de facto no one who wants to. <laughs> <laughs> That's what I'm saying. But when, when folks hear those words, no, they, yeah, fair they, I, I more that. often than not, they think the reason there's only one company is because for some reason the city gave away exclusivity. Right. Uh, no. The impact may be the same, and I sympathize uh, uh, on a de facto reality, but I just don't want to leave the impression that this city. Or, or most cities that this uh, ever sign exclusive licenses. They cannot and they don't. Right. And I, and I right. do appreciate that right. distinction. Right. That's an important okay. distinction, but you're, but to the point, it is point in fact, a de facto rigged system, if you will. So in some <laughs> else applies. Verizon right. applied to compete in 113 Massachusetts towns and cities, and there's uh, competition in 113. So it's really a function not of the franchising process. I don't want it to reflect on the right. licensing authority or the committee or the legal work. It's merely the marketplace. Okay. Well, the, uh, <coughs> okay. <laughs> well, we can debate how that marketplace arrived to where it is right now. And the fact, the fact remains is, is there's not a lot of people queuing up here for a competitive contract. So, the, and the fact is, is that the other fact is it's a 10-year contract. And 10 years ago, to give you some perspective, I worked in a video store. Remember a video, video store that you used to go in? You could actually <laughs> rent and you'd take it home. Yes. That doesn't happen anymore. I'm unemployed now, thank you. But the fact is, is that, that when we do these contracts, they are very long term. And in, that, in those 10 years, technology ex improves exponentially every 10-year gap. And in fact, the contract actually does not necessarily reflect the pace of technological improvements. The thing is, is that what's incumbent upon us is that we consider these things as we go forward. And I think to Ms. Timberlake's point, that it, the, we're not only talking about community access, which I actually, it, which we've clearly proven tonight, has a very robust presence in this community and is desired by this community. But the fact is that the infrastructure is wanting and will be wanting, and that the, uh, Comcast should be impelled to improve that infrastructure, particularly 
peg. Peg. <laughs> what does peg stand for? It, 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 you know, this is a peg system. It's, we are talking about, the, we have the education part down on the E. Do we have the government part down on the G? What's the P for? Oh, right, the public. <laughs> we, the, the fact is, is that Comcast offers this not out of altruism. <laughs> this is not a, 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 a little gimme to us. This is actually, they are required by law and have been fighting and resisting this requirement for some time and may succeed at some point. And in that time, we need to improve our status in order to maintain this asset that we have. And to uh, Professor Jolly's point, this is the point, this is the crux of the point where communication is either dictated by the public or is dictated by commercial interests. Mm -hmm. And we have an opportunity to make it known that we clearly want to hear from the public. And, you know, a copper wire from their system <laughs> to, provide, to provide the city council meetings where I, I'm unfortunately reflecting light, for, but the <laughs> fact is that, that, that the signal for a lot of people is they're underserved. It is hard for them to digest, it's hard for them to understand. It's hard in the best of circumstance, even in HD, I'm sure, but the fact is, is that in the standard broadcast analog quality that they're receiving now, it is, it is a disservice and is not meeting um, the, the minimal expectations of what P stands for in that PEG acronym. Thank you very much. Thank you. Um, my name is Jean Henry Hoos, and I live at uh, 36 South Park Terrace in Northampton. And I'm here because for the last eight years I've volunteered as the person who um, organizes and runs the Northampton Education Foundation Spelling Bee. Northampton Education Foundation Spelling Bee. Um, this will be the sixth year that um, NCTV has come forward and helped us to be able to get the word out about that event. And and unless you've been in the position of trying to get um, local information out to the community, you don't really understand how few options there are now for um, local information to be, um, to be disseminated. And um, when I heard that Al Williams needed people to come speak um, in favor of NCTV, I um, am so very grateful for everything that they do for the spelling bee that I wanted to make sure that I came. Thank you. Thank you. And I think our final speaker of the night. Final. <laughs> and then we will show, we did have one video submission that's about two minutes long. One procedural comment. Okay, very good. So go ahead. Hi, my name is Lenore Brick, and I live at 255 Strong Street in Amherst. Um, I, I think a lot of us have spoken um, to the what is needed um, and to the why it matters. And when we understand the value of something, then we just figure out how to make it happen. It's not, uh, you know, we don't have to pinch every single penny. We know this is really important. This is important to our community. This is important to our democracy. This is important to our society. So we are asking Comcast to not only fulfill your societal obligation by supporting the communities that you're profiting from, but to borrow a concept from our local food movement, we're asking you to be a local hero. And the, the concept in, in the local food movement, which we have a very strong bias in the Pioneer Valley for, it's part of our ethos, it's part of our cultural fabric, we understand that it supports the local community and it's a small way that we combat <coughs> local global problems. In the same way, local community media is a very local experience where we maintain and preserve local flavor, local voices, but it also has a global impact. And I want to speak to that a little bit because not, not everybody might realize whoops, that um, some of the programming that happens in community media happens in many, many, many different communities all over the world. 
And even though it happens locally, because it can only happen locally because it's not for profit, it's run by volunteers, there is not a pro profit motive like mass media, it's not homogenized, but, but it also is connected. So it connects communities across borders, across towns, across countries. And I'm part of a local volunteer effort that provides programming for NCTV, for ACTV, um, and I just wanted to share a little bit with the people here so that you could feel good about being part of this effort. Um, there is one such program entitled Words of Peace. It, it airs on NCTV. It airs in 36 countries, translated into at least 20 languages, on over 350 stations, reaching a potential audience of over 300 million people. And its message is very simple and, but profound, that peace is a human fundamental need. It's possible because it already exists inside of each human being. And if we want it to manifest in the world, we need to feel it for ourselves first. This is one just noble piece of programming that can only happen on community media. And I just want to read you a couple of responses from viewers, one in Northampton. Uh, she said, it turns my whole day around and tenderly reminds me of what really matters to me. One somewhere else in the U.S., last night I was flipping through channels desperately trying to avoid desperate housewives when I came upon the most incredible show I've ever seen on TV in my life on community television. In Brazil, this message is universal, not something that needs to be force-fed to people. It makes sense. And in an increasingly cold and cynical world, it's more pertinent than ever. It's a practical tool in the fight to remain whole in a world that seems determined to tear us apart. In Lebanon, this man where, that I hear speak every night touches my heart profoundly with his wonderful words of peace. I cannot sleep if I don't hear his lovely words that fall as a bomb to my heart. I mean, it's on and on and on. So I, I'm, I'm speaking the way we are all speaking, that we want to support NCTV to be fully operational, provide what's necessary for it to be up to date, cutting edge, continuing resource for the community and beyond. But I'm asking specifically that Comcast please be a local hero. Please embrace this partnership with NCTV. The, the city of Northampton, please embrace this partnership that we can offer a service that may appear very humble but holds a great potential. Do it not only because you should, but because maybe it even make you feel good. Thank you. Additional testimony that was submitted by um, Dave Packman. Uh, he wasn't able to be here and he has done a written comment. Excuse me, I'm going to just move over. I'm David Packman and I wanted to talk for a second about the value of NCTV to Northampton as a community resource. Back when I started my program years ago, without the support of NCTV, without the expertise and the knowledge from the staff at NCTV, and also the support for creating alternatives to corporate media, I don't think my program would be what it is today. There is more and more demand for public community media like Northampton Community Television. There are less and less options that are alternatives to the corporate media that everybody has grown increasingly tired of. At this point in 2014, there is really a need for Northampton Community Television to be in high definition. It is not a luxury or some kind of cool new technology. It is becoming the norm, and it's important that our local community media is able to keep up with new technology. I'm also submitting written testimony really just explaining the, the real value of Northampton Community Television. NCTV has really set a high standard for other public media centers and community television stations to aspire to in terms of programming, in terms of staff, in terms of the website, and fully and properly funding NCTV could not be more important in the current media landscape. I'm David Packman and I want Uh, and, and that's he has a nationally syndicated uh, show right now, and he thanks NCTV for being involved in that and making that happen. Um, did any of the board members want to do anything before we finally wrap this up? Jim? Jim? No. I have a procedural item. Okay, procedural. Okay, uh, procedural item. Uh, I would just rec uh, Bill August, uh, Cable Council, to. Uh, uh, Mayor Narkowitz is issuing authority uh, asking the stenographer to 
uh, include in the hearing transcript uh, as an exhibit, ascertainment exhibit A, the legal advertisement uh, of the public hearing, just so the record reflects that there was newspaper notice to the public at large <coughs> in the uh, Daily Hampshire Gazette. Uh, this is a copy of the January 21st, 2014 legal advertisement, and it indicates that it was also published on January 14th. So there were two weekly uh, newspaper notices, in addition to the uh, substantial uh, uh, newspaper coverage and uh, a feature and news article about it. Uh, just to reflect uh, opportunity for uh, notification of the public. Thank you. And thank our stenographer who works harder than all of us here tonight, I think, in many respects. <laughs> And the, the transcript will be one of our ascertainment exhibits and will stand as an interesting chronicle and archive of, of this entire hearing. I have one brief catch-all question that I, I just always ask, if it, and I know it's late, and uh, if I could uh, direct this through the chair to Aaron Saunders uh, from Comcast. It's sort of somewhat of a boilerplate question not any, we're not engaging in negotiations at all, but it's a, a boilerplate question we use at, at cable hearings. Aaron, um, for the, the benefit of the mayor and the, the committee in the renewal process, uh, we need to be apprised if there are any um, uh, significant problems out there that may be on your radar screen. I, I'm not saying that there are, but if there are disputes or litigation uh, uh, from subscribers or, or companies or municipal departments that pertain to Northampton, um, uh, w we have a standing request now that we're in the renewal window that you ap apprise us of uh, anything in that nature. Uh, are, are you aware at this time of, of any particular out of the ordinary, more significant matters that are, are before Comcast involving Northampton? Uh, no, nothing that, that I'm aware of. Uh, uh, file our, our 500. Uh, Aaron, Aaron, I, could you come up? Okay. File our what? I'm sorry. Right. Uh, the short answer is no. Okay. Uh, we file our form 500 uh, as we always do. Uh, also, uh, I, I think certainly from where I sit, we have a great working relationship with City Hall. If subscribers have uh, questions that are routed through there, we're able to uh, address that way. And, and if anything does come up, we'll be we sure to. We just don't want to be surprised at some point, oh, there was some significant dispute or problem and some pattern of problems in some neighborhood or street beyond just like an individual complaint. So it's just a standing request to keep us in the loop because we do have the responsibility of, of uh, generating a document that's responsive to those types of situations and issues So we would want to know about it. Thank Sorry, you. And to supplement, uh, back at the end of December we had our annual review hearing. Right. Um, I, I think that, uh, that that went well. There were no significant concerns raised uh, there either. Okay, and on that note, I thank you because I know you always do have excellent channels of communication with the community on those types of things. As always, thank you. Good. Can I speak to that just briefly? Yep. Uh, you could put out a notice to the community if, to, if they've had any sort of issues or concerns regarding Comcast to tell you about it. Right. Because this is about the uh, community access station, but as far as general service, I think you might well, hear something not. else just about community access this yeah. that, i mean the, 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 service, all, uh, you, the you know the, the the majority of the comments were about community access but the purpose of this hearing is to ascertain any and all cable related needs so the public should be on notice uh as the record will remain open we are here seeking and on, on an ongoing basis seeking information about any and all cable related needs can i Yes, very clear. Very good. Yep. Yep. 
might be hard to read in the fine print, <laughs> but it specifically refers to, uh, you know, just a, a general, uh, yeah, comment on any cable matters. Because I hear a lot about it. And right. Would, would they have to come to a meeting or they just write in at the average they, they, address that is? Those can be submitted to the city. Very good. Yeah. Good. And they will be brought to the cable advisory board's attention as well. Thank you. Thank you. That's so I think the only thing is to remind um, everyone that this is an open process and we're still accepting comments. We will be accepting comments. Um, there may be additional hearings um, of which you would receive legal notice. Um, so and comments can be submitted either by mail to the City Hall, um, care of the City Hall to the Cable Advisory Board. Um, you can address them to me, the chair, or just in general to the Cable Advisory Board. And um, also the economic development. Um, Terry Masterson is also accepting um, emails. And his email address is tmasterson at nct, uh, uh, sorry, North. <laughs> Northampton MA.gov. Northampton, I've listened to NCTV too much tonight. <laughs> Northampton MA.gov, so just to be aware of those two things, and I'm sure that um, NCTV will put that on their uh, notice board as well. I know they've been advertising that. Right. This, is, this is a great hearing, a great community outpouring. Thank, Thank you. you so much for coming out. Yes, I think um, we can.